Hello. So, uh, the main advantage of microfluidics, especially for applications in analytical chemistry, biotechnology, and uh, chemical processing, it stems from the fact that one can control the size of bubbles or droplets uh, precisely so as to uh, be able to create monodispersed bubbles or monodispersed droplets, emulsions, etcetera, for a number of applications, and they can have a very precise control over the processes and can control and uh, manipulate the interfaces. So, in order to be able to do that, one needs to understand the mechanism of the formation of these droplets or bubbles. So, if one look at the literature, the experiments that have been performed in microfluidics or the applications that have been developed, there are uh, there is lot of work that has gone through in understanding the formation of uh, bubble and droplets. So, in this lecture, we will try to review uh, some of the uh, droplet formation and bubble formation mechanisms and what are the factors that may affect them, what are the different regimes that may exist during the formation of droplets. So, uh, as I said uh, that many uh, processes uh, that are relevant to microfluidics, they required very highly controlled formation of interfaces that is bubbles and droplets. One example is formation of dispersions. Now, this can be achieved or this has been achieved by the design of the channels. So, as you will see that number of channels that are of relevance in microfluidics they are rectangular in nature and uh, this is achieved uh, by say T junctions. So, in the T junctions, the continuous phase which is generally a liquid comes uh, from the straight stream and uh, the dispersed phage enters from the uh, arm and the size of these two channels uh, D and let us say D dash they may or may not be same. The, the channel depth may or may not be uh, same. As you might have seen or might realize that a number of applications, especially because of the ease in manufacturing, number of applications in microfluidics, the channels are rectangular or square in nature. So, most of these channels are rectangular or square. So, one of the configuration that is often used is T junction. A variation of T junction is uh, say Y junctions and this angle theta between the two channels might vary. So, this is y junction and another approach that has been used uh, to generate flow is known as flow focusing device. So, for example, the dispersed phage
comes from the center and the continuous phase from the two sides and a neck formation can happen and that is where the bubble may generate. So uh, these are two different configurations. There are actually three but we can consider Y junction to be a variation of T junction where the angle between the two channels is not 90 degree but an angle theta. So uh, the mechanism of droplet breakup or the bubble breakup in different channels is expected to be different or it has been observed to be different. Now uh, there are a number of factors that may affect the process of droplet break breakup. First of all uh, that it may depend on the flow rates, the Q of continuous phase and Q of dispersed phase. It may also depend upon the viscosity of the dispersed phase and viscosity of the continuous phase. Now viscosity of the dispersed phase if it is uh, gas bubbles then uh, the viscosity of the dispersed phase can be negligible. So it when gas right negligible uh, it may also depend uh, rho d and rho c but it generally is not observed to depend on such parameters it may also depend on d d dash and other geometrical parameters Uh, channel geometry, so we can say. Uh, now let us look at the droplet breakup in these different uh, channels. So uh, first, we will look at droplet breakup in T junctions, and uh, in T junctions, it has been observed that depending on the velocity of the liquid or the viscosity of liquid, uh, different flow regimes or different mechanisms are observed. For example, uh, so this can be uh, grouped together in capillary number. That capillary number is mu u over sigma. So the cap at low velocities, the capillary number is expected to be small for water. For very highly viscous fluids, one might see that the capillary number is large. Uh, for highly viscous liquids. So there are three distinct regimes that has been observed. One is squeezing regime, then the dripping regime and then jetting regime. So in the squeezing regime, uh, it is observed uh, at the smallest capillary numbers. So the capillary number less than 0 0.01 or 10 to the power minus 2. You might want to uh, clarify what is this mu, mu is mu dispersed or mu continuous. So the mu dispersed is not uh, so significant here, it is mu continuous which is used in the definition of capillary number. So at low values of capillary number. Uh, the squeezing regime is observed. Uh, the dripping regime, uh, it is determined by uh, the shear stress uh, or uh, by the interplay of the shear stress and the, uh, the interfacial tension. The balance of these two forces will determine the size of the bubble and in the jetting regime what one gets is a long jet of the two continuous fluids. So the thickness of jet or thickness of this thread uh, is determined, determined by the viscosity ratio of the two fluids. Okay. So let us look at the squeezing regime.
In the screeching regime, uh, it uh, can be described in a number of steps. So, uh, in the first step, as the liquid enters from the T junction and it uh, starts forming a neck, uh, slowly this uh, develops because the flow is from left to right in these cases. And uh, uh, as the droplet enters, it grows in size. Once it grows in size, the necking occurs or, uh, or the this interface, the size of this interface or this distance keep decreasing and eventually the droplet breakup occurs. So, this region is squeezed. So, the four steps that we have listed here that first the liquid penetrates the main channel and then forms a blob because the flow of the continuous uh, liquid or the continuous phase is happening in this direction. So, this deforms or this moves the interface towards the downstream direction and this blob moves towards the downstream direction. Then uh, uh, slowly a neck is developed and this neck will depend on the on the flow rates of the two fluids and then eventually this neck elongates the bubble or the blob becomes longer and the neck becomes thinner and thinner and then it break up breaks up and the droplet or the bubble is generated. Now in the dripping regime the process is same uh, but the one can see that necking does not occur at the junction itself but further downstream. So, this is not determined as we will see that the breaking or the necking process is not because of the flow rates of the two uh, liquids or the two fluids uh, but rather the shear stress balance. Okay. So, uh, this is a typical picture of the dripping regime. And then uh, the third one is jetting regime. So, in the jetting regime what one observes that this uh, the thread the liquid thread becomes longer and longer and eventually this uh, the the necking or the droplet generation happens because of the capillary instability. So, this particular uh, experiment have been, have been observed at. Uh, higher capillary number C A is equal to 0 0.05 and the previous one at C A is equal to 0 0.035. Okay. Uh, so, uh, most of the applications where the viscosity of the liquid or the dispersed phase is not very high. So, for the gaseous applic for all the uh, applications of the uh, water and so on at low fluid velocity which is generally the case in microfluidics. The capillary number is small. So, it is important or, or the, the squeezing regime is the most important flow regime. So, low capillary number as one can see the capillary number is ratio of mu u over sigma or the ratio of mu u by length scale. So, mu u over d divided by sigma over d. So, it is ratio of viscous stresses or viscous forces to interfacial stresses and uh, one can see that the at low capillary number the interfacial stressage will be dominant and the shear stress will be uh, uh, relatively lower or smaller than the interfacial stressage. So, it has been observed experimentally that L where L is the length of the droplet. or bubble as the case 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 may be 
and so volume of bubble or or volume of the droplet that is proportional to the L because the, there will be a constant thickness liquid film surrounding it as we have seen in uh, Taylor flow examples of Taylor flow. So now uh, it has been observed experimentally that the length of this bubble or L by A is proportional to or equal to 1 plus alpha the ratio of the flow rates of two phases, the volumetric flow rate of discontinuous phase and the volume of flow rate of continuous phase. The alpha is a constant which is of the order of 1. So that means that L by A is greater than 1. So, uh, the droplet that means the droplet is longer than channel diameter. Now, this relationship has not been observed that it is always true for the entire range of uh, the ratio of the flow rates. It has been seen that for small values of flow rates or say for uh, this ratio when this ratio is 1, L is observed to be a constant. So, if we plot this picture on a graph where x axis is the ratio of the two flow rates and the y axis is uh, the non dimensional droplet or bubble length, then one observes from experiments uh, the, a, a, this kind of curve uh, where we can have two asymptotes. So, at low values less than 1, one observes that L by alpha or L by A is equal to constant and at high values of flow rate ratios L by A is L by A is linearly varying with the ratio of the flow rates. Okay. So, uh, now let us look at the uh, this in further details. So, uh, if we look at the steps of the bubble formation again uh, in the squeezing regime or the droplet formation, what happens that the discontinuous or, or the dispersed phase enters from here and because of the flow it will uh, if there is no flow then it might grow this way, but because of the flow it starts moving in this direction and then eventually it envelops the uh, main channel. When it envelops the main channel, one of the things that happens is that there is always a there is a small opening between the wall and the interface. Let us say this is small opening as thickness epsilon and the, because uh, this restricts the flow of the continuous phase, so the pressure builds up upstream. Now this uh, forms this a blob, blob or this blob is uh, of typical size is A where A is the, uh, the size of the channel and let us say B is the depth the channel of a rectangular cross section so B is the channel depth and if the dispersed phase flow rate or the discontinuous phase flow rate is more than the continuous flow rate then the droplet keeps elongating otherwise it detaches. Okay. So, uh, this has been given uh, that the elongation length uh, the droplet will grow. So,
So in a case uh, where the this if let us say this is the neck D or a clearer picture of neck will be so uh, the droplet growth rate will be determined by uh, the dispersed phase flow rate which is uh, uh, and divided by the cross sectional area. So, the cross sectional area is A is this dimension and B is the depth of the channel. So, the rate at which the droplet grows is Q displacement over AB and the neck shrinking rate, the rate at which once this neck forms and uh, the, let us say that this uh, thickness of the neck is uh, D and this shrinks with A when, when the dispersed or when the continuous phase pushes this neck then the neck sinking rate is continuous phase flow rate divided by the channel cross sectional area. So, Q continuous uh, divided by AV. Now, the time needed to achieve this is squeezing. When uh, the uh, neck will shrink or uh, when uh, the neck shrinking rate is the velocity or it, it is uh, say it has units of meter per second and it also have units of meter per second. Now, if the continuous phase flow rate is more than the dispersed flow rate, dispersed phase flow rate, then uh, as soon as it uh, develops, uh, the neck develops, the dispersion happens actually. This neck will never be able to grow and what one will have is uh, a picture like this. So, this neck will be very thin. Because the rate at which it grows, it is shrinking faster than that. So, this will be the picture when Q dispersed phase is less than Q continuous. So, this is uh, Q continuous and the flow rate here is Q dispersed and in this case uh, the neck Shrinking rate, which is proportional to Q, Q continuous, is greater than the drop rate. Growth rate. So the neck never develops. There is never a uh, a neck which is enveloping the the this mouth of the or the junction of the channel or, or the T junction. Okay. Whereas for the other case, when we have uh, the dispersed phase flow rate is higher than the continuous phase, then we will see a neck forming which may look something like this. So, in this case, 
q continuous and q dispersed the dispersed phase flow rate is more than the continuous phase flow rate so neck will develop and uh, then uh, once this neck has developed reach a steady state there will be continuous supply of the liquid or the gas in this blob at the same time because of the continuous phase flow rate the neck will start sinking and eventually when uh, this uh, the time based on which uh, the squeezing time based on the squeezing time the the length of the droplet will be determined so the total length of the droplet will be when it is diged or when it has enveloped the channel plus the rate of the uh, rate of the droplet growth rate into squeezing time now this squeezing time is neck width divided by the uh, q continuous uh, uh, by ab which is the neck sinking rate so uh, from this one get the relationship l by a is equal to 1 plus alpha q this continuous phase divided by the q continuous phase okay and this alpha will be of the order of 1 okay now uh, coming to the other regime the dripping regime in the dripping regime uh, the balance of two forces so the viscous drag that is applied by the continuous phase on the dispersed droplet and the interfacial force that will determine the uh, the size of the droplet so if we write that uh, the order of magnitude so the viscous drag will be mu u by epsilon so in this case uh, as we have seen that so this epsilon is the distance between the interface and the droplet so that is the uh, order of magnitude of the viscous drag mu u by sigma and that will be equal to sigma over r r is the radius of curvature and from this uh, one can have an order of magnitude of that r is equal to sigma psilon over mu u and from this relationship one can calculate the volume of the bubble this uh, so this is uh, the dripping regime okay uh, we do not have a uh, further uh, relationships for the droplet volume in the jetting regime uh, even in the dripping regime uh, what we have is the scaling law and the dependence uh, of the of the bubble volume on the velocity or the flow rate of the phasage and the viscosity now it has been observed that in the squeezing regime uh, what is important to note here that in the squeezing regime the volume of the droplet does not depend anything else except q of this first phase and the q or the flow rate of the continuous phase so it depends only on the flow rate ratio of the two phases and that is a very uh, important and significant result because it does not depend irrespective of it is gas or liquid it does not depend on the viscosities of either the continuous phase or the dispersed phase 
and um, so uh, this uh, flow regime if it is possible to achieve uh, such a uh, capillary number then uh, uh, it can be used uh, uh, by manipulating the flow rates of the two phases it can be used to uh, generate the droplets or the bubbles of a desired size. Now, at higher uh, flow rates uh, uh, one can have uh, the effect of viscosity, maybe effect of uh, viscosity of the dispersed phase. this especially it is seen in the jetting regime where we have viscous threads and so on and so forth. Okay. So, that was about the T junctions and one can uh, uh, develop similar relationships for a Y junction. Now, for uh, flow focusing devices, so in the flow focusing device, a typical flow focusing device that had been taken by, uh, taken from uh, an article by Garth Stecky et al. and the discussion we have is based around the article or the discussion in the article here. Uh, so, in the flow focusing device, the, the dispersed phase comes from a channel in the middle and the two, uh, from the two sides the liquid phase comes in. Uh, so, what happens in this case uh, that the, uh, this is a particular case where the emulsions or the droplet formation uh, is happening and the polydispersity is less than 1 percent. So, polydispersity means the, the size of the bubbles or the size of the droplet is not dispersed. One get mono dispersed droplet that means the size of all the droplets or all the bubbles is same. This particular case for a gas liquid uh, combination where uh, the gas is coming at the center and it is the, it is the dispersed phase. Now, uh, if you look at this configuration, what they have given is uh, the, uh, this is the W in and W m is varying that is the, the, uh, the neck radius or neck diameter one can say and there is another parameter or the orifice diameter which is a geometrical parameter and these are the lengths of the uh, different. So, uh, this is uh, the flow focusing device is very commonly used to uh, generate poly uh, the mono dispersed emulsions or the droplets or bubbles of same size. Now, there are three steps that have been identified in this. The gas enters the orifice and penetrates into the channel as can be seen here. The gas comes in and uh, it uh, it enters the orifice, it is squeezes in the orifice, there is a film surrounding it of liquid and uh, then uh, it grows and there is a uh, very thin film surrounding it here and then uh, uh, as the, uh, this grows in here, the neck formation happens. So, eventually the neck will be become, neck, neck will become thinner and thinner as this uh, grows and then uh, finally, the neck will form. Now, uh, uh, then uh, when, when the neck is uh, thinning, finally at one particular time, the thread collapses rapidly and breaks. So, the process of uh, thinning of the neck and the, then the collapsing that uh, gives rise to the um, uh, droplet breakup. Now, what has been observed experimentally that the volume of the bubbles, so this is for the bubbles and it, so one need not worry about the viscosity ratios of dispersed and continuous phase, not a parameter, right, because the dispersed and continuous phase ratio is almost 0. So, one do not need to take into account it, uh, this into account in the bubble formation. So, one see or what they have observed that the experiment uh, from the experiments, the volume of the bubbles is proportional to the pressure of the gas stream and at this, uh, at these flow rates, the 
pressure uh, the the gas Reynolds number if one calculates then it will be in the laminar flow regime and one can say that this pressure will be proportional to the gas flow rate from the hagen pajula equation. So, uh, uh, anyway uh, the volume of bubbles is proportional to the pressure in the gas stream and it is inversely proportional to the product of the flow rate. So, the Q continuous phase in the viscosity of the continuous phase. So, it is proportional to the two, uh, uh, it is proportional to the pressure and inversely proportional to the continuous phase and dispersed phase. Uh, flow rate, uh, it is uh, inversely proportional to the flow rate and the viscosity of the continuous phase which is liquid. Uh, so, uh, that is a relationship or a scaling between the bubble volume and the pressure, flow rate and the viscosity. So, in summary, in this lecture what we have looked at is the mechanism of the bubble formation in at a T junction and what we observed is there are three different uh, uh, droplet breakup regime where different physical phenomena govern or determine the droplet or bubble breakup process. These three flow regimes are uh, dripping flow regime, uh, okay. the smallest capillary number what we have is squeezing flow regime at capillary number more than 10 to the power minus 2, uh, one has the dripping flow regime and at further uh, higher uh, capillary numbers one has the jetting regime. So, uh, the most relevant and most useful flow regime is the squeezing regime because the bubble length or the droplet length in the squeezing regime depends on the ratio of the flow rates of the two phases. In the dripping regime, the bubble size is governed by the shear stress or the shear stress uh, that develops on the droplet or the bubble that is responsible for the breakup of the bubbles. In the jetting regime, the gas or the liquid it uh, elongates as a continuous jet and eventually the breakup happens uh, from the capillary instability or, or relay plateau instability. The, the mechanism of bubble and droplet formation in the flow focusing devices is not uh, uh, so well understood uh, where uh, however, what we have seen uh, based on a uh, uh, few articles that uh, the droplet volume is proportional to the gas flow rate or the gas pressure and it is inversely proportional to the uh, continuous phase flow rate and the viscosity of the continuous phase and uh, it depends on the, uh, the two time scales, the time scale uh, at which the, the, uh, the gas is filled up in the continuous core or in the blob that grows and the time scale at which the uh, the necking occurs and the neck breakup happens. Okay. Uh, so, thank you.